This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, some Dunedin, Dunedin residents claim their housing New Zealand houses are uninhabitable and affecting their health. Mondelez International commits to a $7 million redevelopment of Cadbury World. And New Zealanders wanting to make voting easy for themselves in the next general election should enrol before Wednesday. Good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Two Dunedin residents say their housing New Zealand houses are inhabitable because dampness and mould are affecting their health. Maureen Scott and Gary Green claim they have had little or no success getting housing New Zealand to solve their problems. Roselle Lebone has the story. Every day, 70-year-old Maureen Scott makes the trip from her front door down the stairs to her mailbox using her walking frame. She says every step is a struggle. Scott and her next-door neighbour, Gary Green, both live in the Dunedin Hill suburb of Corstaphine. They say their housing New Zealand homes are making them sick. <coughs> this year I've had pneumonia, which ended up with six days in hospital. Uh, that was in March, and I've had three chest infections since. Um, I've been told by my own GPs and that that I've got to get out of the house because of the mould and stuff. Uh, I'm on the urgent list, supposedly, for housing New Zealand, and uh, I just haven't got anything, and that was four months ago. Scott blames black mould in her flat for her pneumonia. When I was in hospital with pneumonia, I ended up having another fall in there. That's terrible. So they put me on a walker and they said, well, you're not going to get off it now. Well, I bought a brand new pair of shoes to go to a wedding and I'd worn them once and I put them in my bedroom and I had them on the floor neatly on a shoe rack. Next time I looked at them, they had mould on them. And I said to Housing New Zealand, you know, I said, that's cost me $150 for that pair of shoes. And he said, well, that's your problem, not mine. <coughs> in April this year, Scott's doctor provided her with a medical certificate stating I would like to request that Maureen be provided with more suitable housing fairly urgently. The most pressing concern is the mould that is in her current house. She was recently in hospital with breathing problems and it is unsuitable for her to be living in a home with mould. Since then, the mouldy clothes have mostly been thrown out. Housing New Zealand has assisted by providing a cleaner to clean the black mould in the house, seal the outside windows and replaced a drafty mouldy wall in Scott's bedroom. But Scott says the living conditions are still damp and the access to the house is still unsuitable. The home has no ramps for wheelchair access, part of regulations for government-owned properties, she says. Now I've got to go through, down, turn and then walk over concrete slabs and mud, and I mean mud. Green says he also has a damp, mouldy housing New Zealand home. I've had to spend, on average, for the last three months, $80 every single week, uh, just on firewood and coal. Uh, I, I'm on a benefit, I live alone, it's not the easiest. Green says he gets through one salbutamol inhaler per week for his asthma. When I was given that house because of my mental health, and this whole issue has just increased the stress and anxiety, which is then compounded onto uh, the asthma and then the subsequent chest infections. And it's just the sheer frustration of dealing with a tenancy manager who has zero interest in actually getting essential repairs done when notified. Regional Manager for Housing New Zealand, Jackie Pivak, told the South Today in a statement the ceiling and underfloor insulation was upgraded in Mr Green's house and Housing New Zealand has responded to maintenance concerns based on their priority. He says while Scott has been a tenant for 18 years, she has only raised her issues in recent months and Housing New Zealand has acted immediately to resolve the matters. I'm Roselle Lebone for The South Today. National Party leader Bill English and the current Minister of Health visited Dunedin on Saturday to announce a billion dollar rebuild of Dunedin's public hospital. The visit wasn't without protest with members of the New Zealand Nurses Association remaining outside while the official announcements were made inside to an invited audience. 
The National Party says if elected, the rebuild will happen within 10 years and cost between $1.4 and $1.8 billion. Dunedin North MP and Labor House spokesman David Clark says the time frame for the build is too slow and if elected, Labor will begin construction in its first term. This morning, Cadbury Confectionery's parent company, Mondelez International, committed to a $7 million redevelopment of Cadbury World. The multinational company says it will create 25 new permanent roles. However, the company admits around 300 shift work positions will be lost with the closure of the factory at the end of this year. A bright, shiny new visitor attraction which aims to create 25 new jobs. Mondelez International's country head James Kane says the roles will be offered to the 350 factory workers who will be out of jobs when the factory closes at the end of the year. Yeah, we'd like to think that that's possible and certainly we've had some initial conversations to that end. So the 25 roles will make them available firstly to our factory staff uh, and hopefully we can fill all of them in that way uh, and if not they'll be opened up more broadly beyond that. But certainly first dibs will be with, the, uh, with our fantastic factory team. Kane says the $7 million expansion of Canterbury World will show how chocolate used to be made in the city. He also says the week-long Cadbury Carnival would dissipate into charity events throughout the year. Uh, yeah, well, effectively we, we've got a bit of a blueprint for the sorts of events that are successful at raising funds for our charity partners and community partners. So we're going to work with the Cadbury World team, uh, here have been doing that for the last 17 years, and also local um, community stakeholders to work out what are the right events to run, when should we run them, um, and how do we have the most positive impact on the community, both through the donations that we're able to generate, but also by creating real excitement and tourism into the city. Walking through the old dairy building with the company's site manager, Judith Meir, she explains what the public can expect from the new facility. We'll open into an area that is all reset and uh, filled with cocoa beans, so that again, that whole concept of from the bean to the bar, we can take all of our visitors on that full journey and show them what chocolate's all about. We're then looking at a totally digital interpretive tunnel coming through here again, so we can be in um, a cocoa plantation in Ghana, we can be in a sugarcane plantation in Queensland, we can take people on a journey of ingredients and have a whole lot of education around that. The company says it's their intention mm -hmm. that the Jaffa race will continue to be run. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. A Queenstown and a Wanaka restaurant are among the five finalists for Best Restaurant in the 2017 National Hospitality Awards. The two restaurants are Queenstown's Botswana Butchery and Wanaka's Tapas restaurant Kika. The winner will be announced on October the 19th. New Zealanders wanting to make voting easy for themselves in the next month's general election should enrol before Wednesday. Wednesday is the deadline to be included on the printed electoral roll and to receive an easy vote pack in the post. Sharon Reese reports. Get enrolled by the 23rd of August and make voting in the general election easy. Voters are being encouraged to enrol before this Wednesday to ensure they receive an easy vote pack and take the hassle out of voting. For ease, it's really important for people to enrol before the 23rd because so long as they're on the electoral roll before then, at their correct address, then they'll get their easy vote card. If they're not at their correct address, of course the easy vote card won't come out to them and they won't receive it. As well as not receiving an easy vote pack, anyone enrolled after Wednesday will have to cast a special declaration vote. It makes it a lot more difficult for them, you know, they may have to go and um, uh, and have a special vote, but they won't be on the printed roll either. So um, they can still enrol. You can still enrol right up until the uh, 12 o'clock, the, the day before elections, so on the Friday 22nd. Uh, but what you, uh, you won't be on the printed roll and you won't get your easy vote card. But enrolments carry on right up until election day. Pickia says young people are one group where enrolment numbers are low. If you've got something that you want to say, have your say through your vote. Otherwise, it'll be votes like mine that'll count and it will only be voices like mine where their voices need to be heard and they, especially with the youth, have a large voice that basically is going unheard. The Electoral Commission has made voting easy with a variety of ways to enrol. Voters can free text their name and address to 3676, free phone 0800 36 76 56 or get a form from their nearest post shop. 
People can also enrol or update their details online at www.elections.org.nz. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, the Dunedin Town Hall Pulse to beats from the streets with the South Island Hip Hop Dance Championships on Friday. And this Friday is Daffodil Day, marking the annual appeal for donations towards the treatment and research and treatment for cancer. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community, thanks to New Zealand On Air. Garage Door Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garage Door's quality service. Garage Door Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaiko Valley Road. Visit www.garadora.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's Pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's Pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's Pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's Pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books with the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or they, or they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost feel as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off. Possum, Merino Possum. Pure wools, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made. 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. The Gate Hospitality and Tourist Centre is a standout attraction of Cromwell and Central Otago for travellers and locals alike. Featuring the Harvest Hotel, which is Central Otago's gateway accommodation, featuring standard and premium rooms, which open onto breathtaking mountain, vineyard and rural views. The Harvest Hotel also has a relaxing, sun-trapped courtyard and standalone conference and wedding centre. The Hunting Lodge-themed Five Stags Bar and Restaurant provides an honest, welcoming, family-friendly place to grab a great feed and a relaxing beverage. Forage Information Centre and Cafe is light and spacious and serves fabulous food and bedazzling beverages and offers information and booking services. In every season, for every reason, the Gate Hospitality and Tourist Centre is something for everyone. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. 
Welcome back. The South Island Hip Hop Dance Championships were held in Dunedin on Friday. The Dunedin Town Hall reverberated to the beats from the streets with NCCAF Otago and Southland Hip Hop Dance Championships. Dance crews from the region's school took part alongside groups from the Raza and Jade schools of dance. The action was fast and frantic as teams battled for overall supremacy. Queen's High School, the dominant minority, won the secondary school competition over second place Fresh Prince from St Hilda's. This Friday is Daffodil Day, marking the annual appeal for donations towards the research and treatment for cancer. The South today encountered people on Dunedin streets delivering the first daffodils of spring. In recognition of the support and donations that businesses have made to the Cancer Society, members of the vintage car club, such as Bernie Horn, were using their old jalopies as a means of delivering the yellow flowers. Well, we're, we're members of the Vintage Car Club and we are the couriers to deliver the daffodils for the Cancer Society to different businesses around town. About a dozen pre-1960 cars were on their floral missions today, with this one being one of the older ones. Uh, this one's here's a 1928 Austin 12 and um, it's just a rustic old truck and uh, we've just um, left it in that sort of natural hillbilly state. This sputtering Surrey might be 90 years old but it's still a dependable mode of transport. We do take a few spares but in general um, because they are so, so simple they're virtually fixable on the side of the road and we carry enough parts and bits and pieces that will go wrong to make sure that they do keep going. Daffodil Day is this Friday with collectors likely to be seen all around town. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. A resource consent has been lodged with the Queenstown District Council to build a community centre on the land beside Aratown St Patrick's Catholic Church. The proposed olive leaf centre will be for the use of the Queenstown Aratown Catholic Church and the wider community. Here's Mina Amso. St Patrick's Church in Aratown is a historic landmark, and if Colin Bellett and his olive leaf trust have their way, it will soon have a new landmark as a neighbour, a community centre known as the Olive Leaf. The Trust has applied to the Queenstown Lakes District Council for consent to build. And we're really excited about finally getting it into the council for approval. We can't wait to uh, see the commencement of the whole project. The proposed building is designed by Aritown based architects Fred Van Brandenburg. It will be at a lower level than the church and would have a wing-like roof shaped like an olive leaf. The building, Bellet says, would be used by the Catholic Church and the community. He says the money to construct the building will come from a wide network of supporters in the local community as well as nationally and internationally. The architect Fred van Brandenburg came up with a magnificent design which uh, many, many people who have seen it have been so excited about it that they want to support us. So we'll get the support from those people rather than from the diocese which doesn't have the money to put into this project. The concedes process is likely to cost the trust over $50,000 very nearly um, causes to withdraw because it's just a crippling amount. It shouldn't cost a lot of money to do something which was for a charitable purpose, non-profit, for the use of not only just the church but for the whole of the community. And so we approached council about that and said could they give us uh, a lower fee rate or, or waive the fees in, in entirely or else kept them at a very low rate. They deliberated long, a long time on that, but came back and said no, they can't make any exceptions. A campaign to fund the building of the Olive Leaf will start once consent has been obtained and project costs finalised. Mina Amso this South Today. After the break on the South Today, Wanaka Airport received a big dump of snow at the weekend, but it wasn't from the sky, and Kia Scouts in Ashburton have been busy cleaning up the riverside. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grassy, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn 
your perfect all-year-round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tane. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here. No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tane. Fancy a little cuddle? Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off. Possum, Merino Possum. Pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made. 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Men's Wear, it fits. Active Furnishes Limited home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. They say nothing in life is free, but some things are, like smelling the flowers, mm. random acts of kindness, mm -hmm. hugs, mm -hmm. compliments, Nice hat. And best of all, how good is free TV? More shows than you can shake a stick at. New Zealand, watch it live for free, on demand for free, record for free, with Freeview. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garagor. Thanks for staying with us. Wanaka Airport received a big dump of snow at the weekend, but not from the sky. <laughs> Two piles of snow were transported by truck from Cadrona Alpine Resort to the airport and dropped off on the grassy area in front of the Warbirds and Wheels Cafe. The impromptu winter wonderland was the idea of ca the cafe barista who learned there were Wanaka children who had not had the chance to play in the snow up in the mountains this year. More than 50 children and their parents took advantage of the delivery. Kia Scouts and Ashburton have been busy making the riverside a cleaner and more tidier place. The South Today was there to film the Scouts in action. The Ashburton Kia Scout Group have been busy after school collecting rubbish along the sides of the Ashburton River. A dozen enthusiastic youngsters trawled the river track 
between Mania Oroto Scout Den and Tinwald Bridge, armed with black plastic bags and gloves. Group leader Julie Hollings said the work counted towards their badges. Today we are picking up rubbish as part of a cornerstone towards their gold, silver and bronze badges. They are very enthusiastic about doing things. This activity we've picked up an awful lot of rubbish of all sorts. The Ashburton Council supplied the rubbish bags and the discarded items spanned quite a variety, including bottles, cans, general litter and even a wheel hub. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Phil Somerville. Yes, hi. <coughs> of course we've got the All Blacks in town and we've got a photographer and a reporter out there. They're working with some local groups and what it's like to be an All Black in training. So look forward to that. Um, a day in the life of. Oh, well, not entirely. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what comes of it. I haven't seen the stories yet. Okay. More on the Mondelez announcements today about Cabri World, but also the future of the, the Jaffa race and the um, carnival. Yeah. I thought I might, should mention the opinion page again. Jim Sullivan's uh, writing, and if, if our viewers haven't read Jim, they should do so. He's very clever and very funny. And he's a writer now based in... Patty Oroa, who used to broadcaster for many years. Colin James on political matters. He's the sort of doyen of New Zealand political writers, very wise and very measured. And I thought I should mention that uh, Dave Cannon and the Wash is back tomorrow. And he's going to ask uh, readers, first of all, where in the central city they think a new, hotel, a new um, hospital might fit. And he's also picking up on one of those in living, in living memory photographs that runs on a Saturday. There was one a few weeks ago from Bayfield uh, third formers out at the Sandy Mount um, kiln on the peninsula and the teacher from 40 years ago has contacted us and said I'd love to know where all those boys ended up so we're going to put the word out tomorrow in Dave's wash column and see how many of those boys we can track down. It's really, really interesting. That's mm. fantastic. And it would be great to see where that, people think that hospital should be. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and really interesting <laughs> to see that poll. Mm. Hopefully you'll publish that. Mm. Lovely. And now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville. Starting with today's southern view taken off the Monarch launch moored at Dunedin Wharf. Looking at the situation, an anti-cyclone will bring a few days of fine weather to the country, some frost tonight and then fine weather for most of this week. To the southern outlook, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden as light winds, fine and 13 degrees for all of you. Over to the central outlook, Alexandra and Wanaka can expect light winds, fine and 14, Queenstown and Tiana the same and 13 degrees. Up to the northern outlook, Omaru and Timaru light winds, fine and 13. Inland to Amarama and Twizel, it's the same and 14 degrees. And here in Dunedin tonight, fine and cold with frost with an overnight low of 0 degrees. Tomorrow, it's sunny and cool with a high of 13 and again a low of 0. And remaining fine and mostly sunny on Wednesday with north easterly breezes and temperatures slowly becoming milder, milder 13 and 1. And in Bacargill tonight. Fine with frost at dawn with an overnight low of minus one tomorrow and fine and sunny and cool temperatures high of 13 and a low of zero. And it's fine on Wednesday with sunny periods and some cloud, mostly high cloud in 13 and a low of five. And that's our news for this Monday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. I hope you all have a great evening. Take care. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.